Hello peeps, Dee here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this tutorial. Now, when I started this tutorial, I thought, you know, I love Starry Night Canes. I haven't made any in a while. And I thought, you know what, it'd be interesting to make a Starry Night Skinner Blend type arrangement. You can see from the orange, orangey red to the green. And, um, and then go from there, make some stuff. And so that's what we're going to do using Cara Jane Heyman's oval templates, which I love so very much. You guys, if you've watched any of my class, you know, certain shapes I really like. I really like this shape. So that's what we're going to do. And here I will show you what I did do in class because first I do the class, then I do the introduction. It's totally backwards, but Hey, what can I say? So we're going to start by making some pendants. Just a very thin, flat pendants. And um, then we move into making spirals because my life, I love spirals. So I make them a lot. So, of course, I'm going to force you to make them too. See? I love them. Then finally, here we go. Just a different stringing, stringing method. So I thought I should show you that too. Mm -hmm. So that's what this class is. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please like, please subscribe. And you know what? I never mentioned the bell. I don't know. I, I post, if I post anything, it's on Sunday. <laughs> so maybe you don't need a bell. Anyway, I've talked long enough. It's time for us to start. We're going to make this. Okay, so here are the colors I've selected from my box. I don't have a lot of cane ends. Well, this is a cane end. I could throw it in here or I'll put it in here. Okay. Now I'm going to take each of these piles separately and run them through little Oscar. But first, of course, now this is a cane end. I think that that will be great. This is a color from that cane, I believe. Then I have this lighter yellow and I'm just roughly chopping. And I will put these roughly chopped pieces in little Oscar. I thought little Oscar was gone, <laughs> but he's still alive. Oh my goodness. Little Oscar's, little Oscar is still with us. Man, that is some little processor. Okay, so that's, I'm going to do the same to this pile, and then I'm going to take individually this pile over to little Oscar, pulse it to small bits, and then I will do the same thing here. So I'll have two piles of bits. Here are our two piles of bits. Now, the one thing I'm looking at, there's a lot more contrast in the green pile than there is in the orange pile, right? Yeah, you can see that too. This looks... There's not a lot of light and dark. There just seems to be the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add some white, okay? So that we have something that pops out and is different than the orange. Okay, so let me do that. Mix all of this up and I'll be back. Well, here are my two piles. You can see that adding the white, now there's some contrast there, the white and the color. So the next thing you want to do is sort of flatten it into a loaf. And if you can make it square, that's really great. Because remember, we're going to be Skinner blending our Starry Night bits. <laughs> yeah, we're Skinner blending our bits. All right, now I have to take a rod, I'll need 
work one at a time. So let me scoop my bits. Bro, lightly turn. Bro, lightly. Keep trying to maintain that square shape if you can. diagonal and put them together like this because we need triangles to make our Skinner blend don't we yeah we do So, of course, when you do this, you have to pick two colors where you think that there's going to be a fair amount of uh, contrast, right? Now, if I were to mix these all together, I'd end up with some kind of brown, some kind of brown. Yeah, okay. And so, I suspect that center area is going to have a little bit of browniness to it. Is that bad? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> and, yeah, you know what? I was going to do straight up corner to corner, but I think I will make this more like traditional. Right, where you've got some green and you've got some of this orangey color, like that. Hmm, the beginnings of another Starry Night came. Okay. Ta -ta. All right, now I'm going to try to roll this down so it is just a bit thicker than the thickest setting of the pasta machine which means I have to roll this down quite a bit now I'm not trying to make it longer this way so I will keep rolling like this away okay I can even make it shorter this way which would actually be better it certainly doesn't need to be this wide. So let me shorten it so that my blend is short, like from here to here. Most. Sort of. We'll see. It's every Starry Night Cane is a new Starry Night Cane. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Squish, squish, squish. Hi, Ditto. Ditto came to visit. Ditto is a new cat. I mean, I've had Ditto since he was a kitten, but since Dolce is no longer here, he's a different cat. He's really sociable and he doesn't hide so much. Yeah, I think she was torturing him. I think there was a little ditto torture going on that I didn't see. 
Let's see, he's a nice kitty. He just avoided the situation by hiding. With no fighting or anything. He just, we never saw him. Now we see him a lot. He's a good boy. He's a good one. But definitely not an alpha type. You guys know what I mean. If you have animals, you know when you have an alpha, when you don't have an alpha. My ditto, not an alpha. Really sweet cat, but not an alpha. Okay, you know what? We're getting there. You've heard my story of Ditto. And now it's this thick. You know, I think I'm just going to stretch it out just a bit like this because this also thins it, doesn't it? Like so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's give it a go. Roll it through the pasta machine. This edge on the rollers. Reset my machine to the thickest setting. And off we go. All right, this is, <laughs> this is gonna be a big starry night day. I started out with a lot of clay. Okay, so just like we would with the regular Skinner blend, we are gonna fold it in half. Like so. Let's look at what we have on the end. Ta -ta. Okay. All right, now I have to roll it again. Cut edge on the rollers, roll through. Now make sure that the whole thing is stuck together. Yeah, you want to do that. Because if it separates, well, you just don't trust me. Trust me. You don't want that to happen. You just have to trust me on that, kids. Have I led you down the wrong path? I hope not. Let's cut again. So here was number one. Here is number two. Okay. Cut edge on the rollers. Roll through. Make sure everything is solidly stuck together. And I would advise you take a cut every time so you can really see where you are, okay? Because it's important that you know just exactly what's happening inside, okay? Okay, so let's do this again. You know, that's interesting. I like it that way. I like it that way. Now, it isn't like, well, there is a blended area in the middle just because certain areas will have more of the red and less of the green. Others have more green, less red. And that's where you get it. But I'm afraid that if I keep blending, this is gonna look brown in here. And right now, it has a really nice kind of stringy look to it. I like it. So I'm stopping here. I'm not gonna go any further. Cut the end. Locate my ruler. Cut this puppy in half. 
ten and a half, five and a quarter. That's math I can handle. And fold it back. Put it together again. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm liking it. Five, two and a half. And I am glad I added that white to the red. I am, I am. I am, I am. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so let's... Huh. <laughs> this is, I guess, the right side. Or the better side. So I'm just going to cut this jaggedy edge off. It's jaggedy. Off of there. And then off of this side, I can cut quite a bit of this. Off like so. Hmm. Oh, I think this is going to be nice. <laughs> but I've been wrong before. It could be a disaster. It could be disastrous. Could be, but I'm liking it. I like it. So this is a Skinner Blend Starry Night Cane. Yeah, turned out great. All right, so let me prepare for the next step. So here's my pile for the black. I have a lot of black. Um, some silver. The silver is all crumbly because it came from here. This was conditioned, but a long time ago. And then I made the mistake of rolling it through too thin a setting. My pasta machine, and it turned into this. Not a big deal. It's going in Little Oscar. Here's my white. I don't want all that much white. So I'm going to chop this up, as I did before. And I'm going to throw it in Little Oscar. Mm-hmm, I am. If you don't have little Oscar, you just have to keep doing this. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. But doable. I'll be back. Now, here are my little Oscar bits. Now, I didn't evidently clean the machine that well, because look, I have some orange in there. Now, if that's going to bother you, pick it out because it... It doesn't disappear. It is, it'll probably be visible. Okay. <laughs> okay. didn't make all that much of it, not compared to the other, but Ooh, look at all that orange. <laughs> look at all the orange. I'm just going to pick out what I see and I think I can avoid orange spots, hopefully. If not, mm -hmm. My bad. All right, so now I'm going to turn this into a starry night by rolling it through the thickest setting on the pasta machine. I am going to put this side on the rollers. I'm going to reset my machine to setting zero, and boom, here we go. Oh, what's a little orange between friends? Okay, so I'm going to roll it through again. This is a situation where it's not as critical. Like every time I fold it, I had to roll it. I had to know what was happening in there. This not so critical. It's just 
your typical starry eyed cane. Okay, so at some point I do absolutely want to see what's going on. What's going on? See, this is the choppy side. Okay, choppy side's fine. Pushing that back in. I'm gonna roll it through again, same way. Let's see what's happening with the choppy. Oh yeah, that looks good. I think I'm stopping there. Now let me take a cut off the side. This is the long side where things get stringy. This is the stringy side. See that stringiness? See the chop, 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 chop. Yeah, I know you do. All right, so let us cut this in half and stack again. Okay, very good. Now, I'm gonna cut this in half this way. Let's put this part together together again and then I have a choice I can use the stringy side or I can use the choppy side right stringy or choppy I have choices now here you don't really have a choice because the stringy side is all one color it's just the choppy side that exposes the whole blend stringy Choppy. Stringy. I prefer the stringy side. Choppy. Hmm. How many am I going to get out of here? Maybe I should have made a bigger cane. <laughs> oh well. We'll be fine. You can trust me on that. We're going to be just fine. Okay, so let me get a tile. In a house with a thousand tiles, I can't seem to find one. No, nope, that's not a tile. I'll be back. Okay, so I rolled my scrap clay through setting number five, and I pressed it to a ceramic tile. Now, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to use the long side, this side. You see, the template comes with these marks. They're very handy, those handy marks. And I'm going to follow the top. That's going to be my division, that topmost line in the template. So it only has to be that tall, okay? So I think I can get several out of one slice because I'm going to make this elongated side even longer because I'm rolling. I'm going to cut three millimeter slices. Hard to see, but I cut three millimeter slices. Everything's gonna be cut from three millimeters. I'm gonna turn this over because I wasted too much. And I can't afford to waste any, to be honest with you. Maybe I should have made a bigger cane. Oh well. Okay, so cutting along the three millimeter side straight down like that, like it. I'm going to roll it through setting zero first. And straighten it out. Then I'm going to roll it down to like setting number three. This is number two. And here we go through number three. Hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So yeah, I have to kind of conserve this because, well, you guys know, you guys know, I made this ridiculously small cane. 
cape. I mean, for me, ridiculously small. So let me just push that right on. You know what? Three is awfully thick, I think. So I don't want the top to be so thick. I don't want these these wafers to be really, really thick. I'd like them to be kind of reasonably thin. There's no need to have them so thick. So I can either roll this thinner, but if I roll it thinner, I'm also elongating the pattern more, or I can take this guy and roll it. So you're like setting number six. Let's just make you thinner, see? Thinner, even setting number seven. Now, I like using a backing sheet, even if it's setting number seven, because I think it adds, you know, some stability. The pieces won't, as long as the pieces are pressed to this scrap clay backing, and they're not going to separate, okay? I don't want them to separate. So that's now we're rolling through setting number seven. Okay. I'm gonna make a nice clean edge like so. Make sure you don't have any air pockets. I see a few. Let's press this. That's better, even though it's thicker than I would like. It's still thicker. Now this guy, okay, let's see. We might have to do a little experimentation with this guy. I'm gonna cut through setting number three. I mean, <laughs> I measured three millimeters and that's what this is. Now, this has to be the same setting as that. Remember, three. Setting number three. If I take this and I roll this way, then of course the distance between the green and the orange becomes even greater. <laughs> if I set this edge on the rollers and roll through three, the pattern will get wider. But in this case, I think it's more preferable because if I roll this through three, uh, yeah, you know what's going to happen. It's either going to be all green or all orange. So let's give this a try, okay? Wish me luck. This side on the rollers. I'll work my way down. Setting number two first. Okay, now setting number three. Okay, so it kind of widened in certain parts, and that will happen. That definitely will happen because I don't cut perfectly. So thicker areas end up being wider than thin areas. Okay, so I think that's good. Now, it's just a matter of figuring out whether you want more, because see, this is actually huge. <laughs> no, well, this might be interesting. I wonder what would happen if I just made it wider and ran it across the middle like that so that it's pro predominantly green on one side. Not quite wide enough, I don't think. It's a little too narrow for that to be obvious. This is more obvious. You see the green, you see the orange. This, it's like, yeah, you kind of see it. You kind of see it, but you kind of don't. So I think I am going to do something like this. Something like this. So where I will cut is going to be right there. Okay. Like this. Cutting off this guy goes back into the future. The future Starry Night Cane Pile. There's gonna be a lot of that going on here. Then I will take like so and cut. Now, there is another option. 
No one says I have to make these this tiny, this small. So let me get more of the template. Okay, so this is the second one. Now, one of my dilemmas with this really was that I was, there was just too much that I was throwing away. So, you know, I marked both of these against the three millimeter side, but you know what? I'm trying to cut closer to two millimeters and then thin. And you can see what happened here. I just have a little bit on the sides after rolling it through setting three. So if you feel you can do that, give that a try. You end up with a little bit less in the future Starry Night pile. Okay. Just a little less, which makes me happier. There we go. Now, another thing I kind of did, the pattern's not quite so wide either. See how much wider the pattern here is? If you look at these light spots, you can see they're spaced farther apart than the ones on the left. Okay. So let me just continue and I'll make a few more pieces and then I'll pop them in the oven. And we'll be ready to back them. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I decided that I would rather make a pendant. <laughs> yeah, I did. And so I pulled out these gold elements that I made. Now these are all cured. So I'm including this in the class. It, right after I do this, I'll show you how you make a sheet like this. And then you make your own little components that can be put onto your and added to your pieces. I really I like them a lot. I do. Yeah. Okay, so these are cured. Little donuts, little dots. And this is the way I store them. See? All of them here. I think I have more someplace. Oh, I do. Oh, hope you smoke because I made a bunch of them. Hmm. They're here somewhere. Okay, anyway. I will find them. But what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to push them in. They are clay. So I'm just kind of depressing them in. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to put a, cr a crystal in. Now, I've had some questions about when you have to pop them out and re-glue them and that kind of jazz, right? And yes, sometimes you do indeed have to do that. I try to push my crystals in deep enough in the clay so that the clay kind of goes over them. Now, in a situation where that can't happen, yeah, you got to pop them off. <laughs> now, I'm going to put a crystal right in the middle of that there donut. So, I'm going to take and put some liquid clay in the donut hole. That might be just a tad too much. So let me see if I can scoop out a little bit, just like so. Then I'm going to take my little crystal. What size crystal should I use? This guy? Is that guy a good size? Fits. And I'm going to push it in. And as I'm pushing it in, the liquid is coming up and capturing the crystal. And that's what I want. Ta-ta. Okay, now I could add more things. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I could just go a little bit bonkers with this, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have three little pendants. I like them. I do. I like them. Mm -hmm. All right, and I don't have to make like 12. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Okay, here they are. Now the last one I decided to put an orange crystal in. Yeah. Now, you can see the liquid there, but it'll clear up. So these guys are going in the oven just like this. 
And the next thing you're going to see, you're going to see how to make these gold components, okay? Or, you know, you could do silver, copper, any color you want, basically. Um, they are made with black clay and metallic acrylic paint. Yeah, okay. That's coming up now. All right, let's make our gold sheet. Three coats is usually what I give it. And they're kind of light coats. I mean, this is a rather large area I'm covering. Okay, and I just push it around. And then I will let it dry to the touch. Doesn't have to be dried all the way down because as a matter of fact, if this, uh, if the paint dries all the way down, <laughs> if it's completely dry, then it doesn't stick to the clay anymore. Oops. So there's a window of opportunity. You have to use it before that happens. So try to make just what you need at the time. Now this is more, but I'm gonna show you something else, so. All right, so it won't take long. That's not very much paint on there. So I'll be back when it's time to do the second coat, which will just be in a couple minutes. All right, so remember what I said about paint on clay? I'm sure you do. You have to use it uh, before the paint actually dries or it's no good, all right? Now, so what I do when I have this much, I have no plans for anything to do with this at the moment. So whenever this happens to me, I make these. These are little, and these are cured little pieces that I can then later use on various pieces. I embed them in beads and, you know, wherever, where ever. Okay. So simple enough to do. You want to take your clay and really press it to a tile like so. We really want that clay to stick. And now let me make a donut. I use this guy. Really push it down, push it in. And because there's no plunger, you know, I really want it to stick because I don't want it to stick in here. All right, so let me make another one. Like so. And I would go down the row. Now, I want to punch the hole, which is that. See, that comes out of this. Or it came out of that, like so. So let me punch the hole in the middle. This one's actually, I think, a little bit large, is it? No, I guess it's the same size. Now I will just keep punching little shapes out like this. They will stick to the tile. I'll bake all of it. And then after it's cured, it comes out and then I break it apart and throw away all the parts, all the excess clay. I'm not gonna really try to remove it right now. I wait until after it's cured. Okay, so every available little space may get a little punch. Never know when you're going to need these things. So even something like that. Otherwise, it's just garbage. <laughs> okay.
and it's worth it to me. I store it with my crystals, you see. Here they are, a bunch of them along with my crystals. And I've been using them quite a bit, so I'm pretty happy to have them. Okay. And so forth. So I'll just continue making my little donuts and my little circles and whatever else I can think of. Hmm, maybe this guy. No, this is the one I was using. Yeah, I really like the donuts, so I make a lot of them. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. So here are these guys. They're cured, and they're ready to be broken apart. Yeah, mm-hmm, they are. Perfect thing to do when you're just, like, listening to t TV or you have a couple minutes and, you know. <laughs> Busy work. But, you know, these are really useful. You just put liquid clay underneath them when you use them, that's all. Okay, so I gotta admit, I haven't really used these little rectangle ones. The ones that I use mostly are these guys. Yeah, these guys. It's just a matter of punching them out. Sometimes they're more stubborn than others, but Hey, suffering for my art. Mm. La da 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 And some of you might be saying, well, that's not worth it. I hate wasting stuff like the gold sheets I make. Yeah, it's going to take a few minutes to straighten it out. But you know what? Once I do, I've got these great parts that can be used for other things. That's what makes me happy. Maybe I'll leave that in there. Maybe not. You know, I think I can make this easier. Something in my little brain says maybe I can make it easier. Maybe not. Okay, I got that one out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm gonna try anyway. Uh -huh. hmm, maybe this one's, oh no, here we go. Da, 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 da. Like so. And I definitely will use these in something. I absolutely positively will. Okay, so I am weird because I actually like doing this. Yeah, how strange is that? I do. I do, I do, I do. Now you, mister, 
Yeah, just bend it. Not gonna break. Just bend and pull it apart. Put it down and look all the little round things I have. Is that all I've got? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take these and pop these out. Da, 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 da. Maybe I could have pushed them out a little harder. I don't know. It's always about this difficult to get everything out. Making my own components, yes. And not wasting gold clay. All right, so I don't think you want to watch me. I just, I'm just going to sit here and do this for about, oh, however long it takes. These might be interesting. I'm liking these a lot. Let's see, a little triangle pieces. I think these are going to find their way into something. Okay, I'll be back. Here is the garbage. Now, if this is a little more interesting, I might actually keep it. Maybe impress it into quite do something with it. But it's not that interesting. Maybe I'll try to make one that is <laughs> just using cutters, things like that. All right. Now I have to figure out what to do with them. Uh-huh. So here are the three pieces. I took them off the tile. If you're new to clay and you put them in the oven, you may think they're permanently stuck to that tile. They're not. You're just going to take your blade, slide it out, and pop them off. All right, so let's examine the edge. It's not too bad, but you know what? We're going to sand it because it's going to be better. Now, I have Aubrinette P120 here. I really like Aubrinette. If you can't find Aubrinette, then you can use just regular wet-dry sandpaper, probably 400 grit. Okay, so let's just sand because it's easier, I wrap it around a little sponge. It's just easier to hold on to and use. Okay. So here we go. So that's feeling really good now. Now I'm going to be taking a thin sheet of black clay that I've textured and I'm going to put it on the back and then bring the clay up along the sides so that we're going to conceal all of this. Now because the sheet's going to be very thin and textured, that texture is like opportunities for it to crack a lot. So in order to make it a little bit easier and less likely to crack along this corner, I'm just going to take and soften the corner, just like that. I'm sanding from top down, just trying to round it out a bit, like that. Doesn't take much and it makes life a lot easier. <laughs> It does. Okay, so let's get rid of some of this, some of the grit. I love the Aubra net. It holds most of the grit in, in it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So that looks much, much better. And now we're going to prepare our clay. I really like the orange one. Look at that. I should have made them all orange. I love the orange. It picks up that orange. Like it. Okay. So let us take our black clay condition. I'm going to roll this through setting number five. There we go. Setting five. And you know what? I'm going to texture it. If you watched any of my classes, you know what happens next. This is my dual plex 
Gee, what color, <laughs> what color have I designated for this piece of dualplex? Yes, of course, black. Okay, put it on like so. I don't need a piece nearly this large, so let me just cut some away. Just gonna get in the way. Now I'm going to roll both of these through setting five, the same setting, just to texture the black clay. Peel it off and you've got a nice texture there. Okay. Now let's take liquid clay and a brush and apply a thin coat of liquid clay to the back and along the sides. Now you want just enough, you don't want too much. If you put too much liquid clay on, then the clay just, the raw clay just starts slipping and it gets a little bit difficult to manage. Plus too much liquid clay, it just softens. It will soften the raw clay. So this black sheet will also get very soft and if it gets really soft, then it gets uncontrollable. You'll find areas that are really thin. So you want to use enough, but not too much. Okay, so that's good. Just a light coat. All right, let's turn this over. Position that like so. Cut the excess away. I need enough to come up and around. Just like that. Pick it up. Now press it to the back. You don't want any air between the raw clay and the back of the piece. That looks good. And then just gently, like so, okay. and you're easing the clay around. Ta -ta. <laughs> We're not done yet. I'm gonna take a craft knife, insert it, and I'm just cutting against the cured clay, okay? And I'm not moving the blade out like that. If I move the blade out, there's a chance I'm gonna pull this clay away from the piece and I don't want to do that. So if I'm moving in any direction, I'm kind of pushing the clay to the piece, not away from the piece. Same thing up here. Like so. Okay. And sometimes, you know, the blade, it's like I'm stuck against just a little piece <laughs> of clay. <laughs> Doesn't always want to just smoothly trim away, but just do the best you can. But now we can't see the clay along the edge. Here, and that's really what I wanted to do. Now, at this point, you're also going to put your name. If you have name canes, and I do, I can't really see it right now. <laughs> I have to clean my studio. So I'll skip it for now. But I have a box of uh, initial canes. So this is gonna go in the oven again. And when I do it, what I do this time is I take my tile and then I'll put like a piece of Kleenex or tissue or paper towel, something like that, just like that. So I don't get any flat, shiny spots. All right, so let's cure this. I'll be back.
All right, so let's make a spiral because, because I do this, <laughs> I like the shape. That's why we're gonna do it, might as well. Now, if you've seen it before in another class, then you know how this is done already and you don't have to watch. If you don't know, keep watching. Here is our cane. Now here is a cylinder of scrap clay. What I'm going to do now is cut thin slices off of the cylinder, like so. Okay, now you can tell that the cylinder is scrap clay, it's kind of a dark scrap clay. So if you're using a cane that has any translucence to it, then you're gonna to wanna to wrap this in white first. All right, because you'll see through it. Yeah, you will. Okay, so let's put it on. Apology, I meant to do my nails today. Didn't. Not a fan of doing my nails. I know that some people really like it. They find it fun. I find it to be kind of a pain. All right, so let me just cut some of it off because I have too much, too much. Let's fit that together. And that's looking pretty good. This piece started out with a substantially larger core than I'm working with now. So you can make adjustments that you want. If you want something that's kind of small, you start with a smaller core. And if you want a great big one, then you're going to start with more clay in your core. Okay, so let me just measure it so you'll have some idea. Oh, this is almost, this is almost five eighths of an inch. Okay, so now we have to close the ends because we don't want anybody to know what's inside. So just gently push in, just indent the ends and then Try to draw the clay from the sides up over the end. I think I could do this in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, I think, I really honestly think I could. Now, if you see any of that scrap clay poking out, just take something like your ball stylus and push it back in and then continue to draw the good clay from the sides up to cover. Let's do the other end. <laughs> yes, I make a lot of spirals. I cover a lot of scrap clay this way. All right, here we go. Just like that. Ta-ta. Not exactly done yet. I'm just going to bring a taper out of the ends by doing this kind of thing. If it starts twisting and you don't want it to, just take your fingers and twist it back. <laughs> Easy enough to do, my friends. Easy enough to do. Okay. Da, da, da. Yes, I have a lot of spirals. Spiral thingies. Why not? I like them. Okay, this one has the orange starting the curve. So let's start this one with the green. Let's just reverse it. Okay, so I'm still drawing some, some out, so I have a nice tail. Okay. Now I talk about clay developing kind of a memory, and this clay remembers it was a straight cylinder, then it remembers that it's this shape. What it doesn't remember is being that shape. So you have to encourage it. 
and you have to be patient. You have to give it just a little bit of time to accept the new direction. So what I do is I take my finger and I start bending it like that. And as you get to the thick part, of course, it's more resistant to bending. So just do one of these numbers. Try to get it to bend. Okay. And let me tell you, when you put it in the oven, it opens up a bit. So if you want a very tight spiral, make sure that you shape it and then you let it sit. Just let it sit and adopt the new shape and then cure it. See this, when I did it originally, was much was tighter. It loosened up in the oven. As it got hot, it just kind of loosened up. So if you can be patient and wait, you can even do it tomorrow, let the clay cool and settle into this new shape. All right, so that's it. Now on this one, I did put a little gold donut at the top and I will drill into the hole and put a screw eye pin. Okay, it's kind of a nice finish. All right, let me grab my donuts, my donuts, my little golden donuts. Okie dokie. Little golden donut. Now, is that some of my donuts have different sized holes? Like, that's a larger hole. I'm going to use a larger hole. Now, this time, I am going to take a bit of liquid clay and put it where I want the donut to go. That was a little much. A little too much liquid. Just a bit. And I'm going to push it in like so. It looks good. And then I'm going to leave this and cure it tomorrow. Let it catch up. Okay. Now, this one is cured, so let's finish it. What I need, first of all, you know, I made the mistake of cleaning my studio. I did. It was a big mistake. Where is, where are you? I'll be back. Okay, embarrassed to say it was like right there. <laughs> Here's a box of miscellaneous stuff. See more of the gold things and this time I even made a little triangle so I can break those apart when I need them. I need a screw eye pin. You a good one? The one thing about these is that they're not sort of standardized. See how this one's longer? I'm going to use the longer one put the short guy away. First thing I'm going to do is take a very fine drill. Fine drill. See, this one is pretty fine. This is a Kemper. It's a Kemper tool. But first I'm going to take this pin tool and just see, make a little hole right there makes it a little easier to drill. And I'm not gonna drill a lot. I'm just drilling just a few turns because it makes it a little bit easier to seat this guy. Da, da, da. And my glue, my glue with all this glue around it. Hmm. Okay, let me just push you in there. Dude, dude, so cool. Oh. Now, at this point, it helps to have another tool other than your fingers, other than my chubby fingers. This. 
Okay, and I'm just going to find that hole and start it. I'm trying to screw it in straight, but it might be going off and it doesn't really matter too much because the only thing that's visible is the eye, right? Right. Okay. One last turn. And it's this way because I'm going to take an oval jump ring, big dude. I only use ovals. I think I've covered that with you guys before. And I would encourage you only to use ovals, not round. Oops. Round jump rings are an invitation to just, I mean, it's inevitable. At some point you're gonna lose whatever it is, uh, it's supposed to be attaching. The reason why is because round keep turning, 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 and it's just a matter of time before the opening ends up right there and then it off it goes. Okay, so if you use ovals, and always, always make sure, because I saw something ridiculous. I saw an oval jump ring with the opening there. <laughs> I thought, well, you're going to lose whatever it is immediately. You have to make sure the opening is on the side like this, not here and not down there. Okay. I know that was just insane. I thought, who did that? Who in their right mind did that? Easy enough. Somebody wasn't thinking. Okay, then I'm just going to put a wire on. And I have as yet another spiral thing. Yeah, let me go up. Okay. Okay, peeps, I'm back. This is cured. Now, look how thin that is. It's lovely. It's very lightweight. I like it. But you know what? It's a little bit thin to drill into with my eye pin, my screw eye pin. Yeah, I just have to tell you, it's it's true. <laughs> it is true. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do instead. Now the other one, this guy, when we did that, here it is. Of course, we screwed right in because it's so bulky. This piece is chonky. It's chonky enough to drill right into. This one, not so much. So when I'm faced with something like this, I got a couple choices. Um, first of all, it's going to require curing again, unfortunately. Now, perhaps I could have thought about this before I cured it with the backing, but unfortunately, I did not. So now I have to do it as a separate curing. Not a big deal, I cure a lot. But yeah, you know, thinking about it, I probably could have could have done it before. But the good news is I found these. So you don't have to wait for me to find those. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I take, this is a U gouge, it looks like a U. And I am just going to carve. You know, I turned my phone on airplane mode and I'm still getting messages. Sigh. Okay, and I'm just carving a little channel. See that little channel? And this piece is gonna go right in that channel. Okay. It's going to go in the channel. And that's pretty good. It's still sticking a little bit above in the back. So I can actually carve a bit more out. Make this channel a bit deeper. So that it is absolutely sunk in like that. And it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue 
and put just a little bit right down in that channel, like so. Then take this and lay it in. Lay it in like so. All right. Not too bad. Now, I would like to capture this screw in something. Now, it's in glue, but the top of the screw, I'm just going to take and put a little bit of liquid right there on top. Okay? I'm trying not to get glue on my... I have ruined more brushes because I get a little glue on them. Eureka. Now I have to cover it up. Not a huge deal. Just take a round cutter. And maybe this one's a little bit big. I could get away with something smaller. But let's just use it. Because it's here. Okay. Now let me just lay it right on top. And I have captured the screw. Of course, it'd be nice if I actually centered it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm just pushing it down in there. And now I have captured the screw eye pin and I think it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with the way it looks. And I'm going to take this opportunity because I've also found my signature canes. Okay, I had my signature cane. <laughs> box of signature cane. Oh, I need a bit of liquid. Just because it can't hurt. Okay, so this is going to go in the oven again. Once it's cured, once the new, the fresh clay and my signature cane are cured, we're done. Just need an oval jump ring and that's it. All right, so when we began, I showed you Cara Jane's example on her template. How did you use the template? Um, and then, you know, sort of my original intent was to show you how you would string pieces like this. Uh, and then I deviated and I made pendants instead. And then I made a swirly thing instead. So, but I think I really have to show you this, okay? How you would make something like this stringable. Okay, so what we have to do, essentially, is we have to create a channel that goes across like this. So first you want to establish what you're gonna string on. Now I string on this, it is two millimeters in diameter, it's hollow rubber cord. This is what I tend to use, okay? If you're going to use something much, much, much finer, well, you have to consider what that diameter is because that's what you need. You need to make a channel that is big enough to accommodate whatever cord you're using. Make sense? Good, I thought so. All right, so this as the other, the gray has been rolled through five and the top pieces have been rolled through five. It's a total of two layers of five. That's just, I'm telling you as an example. Now first I'm gonna roll out my backing sheet. This is not what happens in the middle where the channel runs. This is what happens in the very back. And I rolled this through setting number three on my pasta machine. Don't want it too thin, don't want it too thick. This is like, you know, the three little bears. You want it just right. Okay, so I am going to roll this through my pasta machine once again through the same setting. The sheet is three. And I, that's what I'm going to roll it through. Da, 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 da. 
Okay, because I want texture. Now, let's take this booboo and put it on a ceramic tile. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Just gonna lightly put it on. I'm not really pressing it down. And we'll cut off the excess here. Set that aside. Now, we need to make the channel. And for that, we need another sheet of clay, that, and we need it to be the same thickness as the cord. Now, I rolled this through setting number one on my atlas, and it's fine. It actually seems to be a wee bit thicker, so let's roll this through setting number two. and do our little comparison again. What I don't want is I don't want it to be so much thinner that it creates problem for me later. Yeah, okay, setting number two is the setting for my cord. Okay, so this piece, now I'm gonna consult my template once again. Actually, I don't need the template, I just need a piece like this. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it right there so that there's a margin on top and a margin on the bottom. And let me cut straight across. My blade has all kinds of schmutz on it. I have a schmutzy blade. And also see the rust on my blade? Yeah, that means it's carbon steel and that's what I want. All right, so now I have separated it, and I've separated it where I want the channel to run, which is at the separation between the black and the other. Now let's take this, put it on the sheet, like so, and then I am going to take my cord and just kind of lay it there for just a moment so that I can position. Well, maybe I'll do this first and see if it will fit through. through. Kind of like that. Okay. And that's good. I'll probably have to do a little bit of drilling, but it's not a lot. And I would rather have a hole that's a little more snug than one that's too big. Okay. Liquid clay, just a thin coat on the back, like so. Then you're just going to take this and position it where you want it to be on the channel. Now I'm going to take that black line. I'm going to try to send it right down the middle. Okay, how are you looking? Like so. And I'm going to try to just cut some of it away, like so, by arcing my blade. Now I'm going to have to sand, of course. Okay. But this thickness, it's just too thick for me to use a needle. Too thick. And I think it's even a little thick to use a scalpel. Because what happens is, you know, it, it pulls the clay where it's cutting. So I think that this is just better. And then I will sand after. And that won't take much. So there's the first one. 
Now, at this point, I want you guys to really look at the overall thickness. Is this the thickness you want? Do you want it thinner? Because if you want it thinner, you're going to have to take this and you're gonna to have to thin that bottom sheet. You know, you really don't have a lot of latitude with the middle sheet. The middle sheet is the same thickness as the cord, right? I don't have a lot of latitude to change that. Not right now. So that's what's happening here. If I want this to be thinner, then the best course of action would be to start again and make that bottom sheet, which was five, make that thinner. All right. Now I'm not pushing really, really hard because I've got that texture. Remember the texture? And you can see that this isn't sticking at the ends like that. Well, we'll take care of that. Now when this is in the oven, what will happen is this top piece is going to relax down like that anyway. So I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. And I'm going to put clay around the whole thing. So I'm going to cover it up. Now, second one, more liquid. Center it on the channel. I want to get all three in here. So let me just look like this. That looks good. <laughs> and you know what, I'm gonna cut here first and then cut there. Straight down, remove that. And then continue to trim. Okay, and trim, and I'm trying to cut straight down, of course. So that's pretty much all I can get to there. Just be sanding. Maybe at this point, I can just take my scalpel and shave off some of the extra. And that's working fine. It wouldn't have worked quite the same, I think, with the initial cut because you're plowing through so much clay. Okay, but at this point, I'm just shaving off bits that I think are in the way. All right, so let me do the third one. I'm gonna pop these in the oven and then when they're done, I'll be back. So these have been cured. And you, let me tell you something. I want you to follow manufacturer's instruction, instructions, curing instructions. Now, I'm using Kato, and uh, I undercured this because I knew I was going to be sanding, and it's going to be easier, right? I don't always do this, but today I thought, you know, <laughs> sometimes I just walk away, and then it's done when it's done, and I have to work a little harder if I cure it for a long time than if I slightly under cure. So I'm gonna take my Abra net. This is P120, okay? And I'm just gonna sand. Now here you see before, before, and after. After is much nicer. It's very dusty, but it's nicer. So I'm just, excuse me going to sand around the entire piece like this. Okay. 
Easy enough to do. Made easier if you slightly under cure and you have something like Abranet and a sponge. This is much easier on your hands. All right, now once I'm finished with this one, I am going to take and rinse them off to get rid of all this grit. Now, the one thing, when you produce grit like this, it's a good idea to do your rinsing in a bowl, like capture the grit, and then uh, let the water dry, and then you've got this kind of flaky stuff. I'm not sure you want like this going down your plumbing. So that's what I try to do is do rinsing like this where I know there's so much dust. Do it in a bowl. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I will rinse everything off and then I'll be back. All right, so these are rinsed, and I'm going to cover this up. Now, if I had put black here, maybe it wouldn't be necessary, but I see that scrap clay making it necessary. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, so what am I going to cover it up with? I could just take black clay, and then there would be a black outline around the whole thing. But I think instead, I'm going to take this. No, I've rolled this through, I think it was, almost, it was either five or six. And you know what? I should know this. So let me roll this through five. Yeah, I think it was setting five. All right. Now I am going to cut through every one of these. We'll get two strips like this. Okay, so that's wide enough. Now let me put, put, let me apply some liquid clay, okay, like so, like that. And what I'm going to do now is try to align this in the right place place. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. Now I'm going to trim it at the hole. Okay. Trimming. Trimming, trimming, trimming. And then at the very bottom. like so. All right, let me take the second piece and repeat. This need to go up a bit, maybe just a tad, like so. Then cut right at the separation like so. Ah, more of the hole is exposed. I think I'm going to expose a little more of the hole on this side too. And then trim away the excess at the bottom. Bring that together like so. And now what I have to do, of course, you guys know, is I've got to trim the excess away because it's a little wide. Let's take the blade. Oh, I'm going to take my blade, I think. Just run it around like that.
at the hub. Okay. Grit. All right. Now for the top, obviously I have to use this. So let me cut a slice and roll it through setting five. And this time, I think I'll go this direction. Yeah, that's a bad slice. I'm gonna take another slice. I think that is a better slice, although the sides are kind of jagged, right? So let me just trim them away, make it a little bit easier. Okay, so how thick should this be? About there. I know I'm going to end up trimming away. That's okay. I just don't want to have too little of it. Okay, now a little bit of liquid clay along the sides again. And let's just position it like so. You know what? I'm just going to poke that right there so I know exactly where the hole is. It helps to know where the stringing hole is. Da, da, da. There you are. Da, da. Mm -hmm. Now let's push this join together. I'm going to poke the hole again. I know this one was a little bit down. Trim the back and do this two more times. All right, so there's one ready to go in the oven. All right, so let me repeat and do these two, put them in the oven, and then I'll be back because we'll be doing some drilling. So here we are. These are cured. We're getting close to the end. Yeah, we are. All right, so at this point, you're going to want to look at the piece. You're going to want to feel it. And largely this, just visually inspecting it and feeling is what will determine what you do next. Sometimes you don't have to sand a piece. Sometimes sanding it will make a piece so much better. Okay, so this right here, it's sticking up. I would like to get rid of it. So I'm gonna start to sand a bit to even out the strip that I put on the side. Remember this. And I'm trying to avoid the crystals and the gold. So my sponge is kind of tilted up this way. See, it's tilted. It's not flat. Okay.
Okay, and I'm using Abranet P180, which is less coarse than the 120 I used before. Now let's go all the way around. Like so. Okay, so that's looking good and it feels good. May hit it with some Nivea after I'm through with all the sanding. Let's just take this and let's do one of these numbers. Okay, that's good. Now go to the back and make sure the back is the way you want it as well. Okay, so I've done two of them. I did this one and this one. I'll do the third in a moment, but you know what? Right now, I think we're gonna talk about drilling. Two are done, one needs to be sounded, but they all need drilling. All right, so here's the scoop. Here is my cord. I've got to make this hole large enough for this to slide through. Okay, so I'm going to take my drill, and this is my two millimeter drill. And I'm just going to send it through. And this is, you know, it's drilling, but it's not difficult because you've already got the hole. Basically, you're just enlarging it at this point. Okay. Just like so. Okay, so let's just give this a go and boom, there we are. Now, when you when we drilled the hole, we considered the cord only. Now, if you have a clasp, even something along these lines, you see this is one of those magnetic clasps. This is actually larger than two millimeters, right? So this isn't gonna fit. I would have to enlarge the hole to accommodate the clasp. And that's the small end. There are clasps, I mean, uh, necklaces, wires, like this guy. Now, I think I got this one from uh, Fire Mountain Gems. And it's a bayonet clasp, but look at how thin it is. It is thinner than two millimeters. So this bayonet clasp, you push in, you twist, and it comes apart. And when you want to engage it, you push it in, you find it, you push, and then you twist. So it's always a twist, pull, twist to lock. But this is kind of a nice thing because it is so fine, right? So here we go, here's another one, like so. Now this is fine, but you have to remember that with this particular one, you can always slide these off, which is, depending on your point of view, a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I can't say. I use these a lot. I think it's kind of a good thing, to be honest with you. Then you've got some um, choker thingies like this. Now this is two millimeter cord, but it has a little clasp that engages like that. This is not a bayonet. You just push it in and you pull it out. So I wouldn't say it's the most secure thing you're ever going to uh, to use, but it's also not terrible, I don't think. If you get in a fight and somebody pulls on you, <laughs> then you'll probably lose your necklace. But if you're just wearing it and you're not engaging in heavy duty sports or mortal combat, then you're gonna be fine. 
you use something like this, well, obviously this isn't going to go through the hole. So you're going to have to pull the cord out, clean out the hole, maybe cut a little bit off and re-glue it. And you're just going to use our handy dandy trusty Loctite. <laughs> okay, so that I think is it. Now let me do that last one. I'll string them up and then we'll, we'll do a little wrap up at the end. All right, so I sanded them and I strung two. Now, I want you to see when you sand, the black parts turn a little bit gray. So I use Nivea hand cream and I just rub it on, right? Now, there may be things that are more permanent, but this is totally non-toxic. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. And it's available, widely available. You're not gonna have a hard time finding Nivea cream. So you're just gonna string it. Now, I've separated each of these with a little O-ring. This is a two millimeter rubber O-ring and it's two millimeters. The inner diameter is two millimeter. So it fits tightly on the cord. These are forceps. That's really the best way you put the O-ring. <laughs> I did that so fast. I meant to show you. O-ring on the end, open it up, slide the cord in, slide the ring off. Okay. Now, if you don't have these O-rings like this, you can use any large hole bead. That would be fine. Okay, so that in a nutshell is your basic, how you put a hole in and string something flat like this, a la, just like, I don't know how Cara Jane does hers. Uh, there are many ways to do it. I'm just showing you the way I do it. Okay. All right, kids. I'm going to have to put a clasp on it, however. If I keep it, I may take it apart and just make these single pendants. I don't know. I haven't decided. It looks kind of funny with just three, I think. I'll probably use a few more of something. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so it's time for the part of class that I sometimes call it finito. I wonder why. <laughs> Yes, finito. So what did we do? You know, when I started this class, my basic concept was, let's do something a little different with a Starry Night cane. And that is to turn it into a Starry Night Skinner blend type arrangement. So that's what I wanted to do. So that turned into these pendants. Okay, little pendants. And in the class, I showed you this gold stuff, how you make that. Then, because no class is complete, or many classes are not complete, until I make <laughs> a swirl. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. It's one of my favorite things to make. And so I have plenty of them in my studio with different patterns. And anyway... That's what happened. I made swirls. Then at the end, I thought, well, you know what? In the beginning, I showed you Cara Jane's template and um, her particular stringing arrangement. So I thought, well, I should probably show you that. So that's what I did. So now we have all of this from this class. Yeah. So that's it. It is finito. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please like. And if you aren't a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I'm Donna Cato, signing off.